Pen sah, pen dia. Good morning, all. Uh, this is last day, and this is morning show. So uh, people are still. I, I hope uh, friends are coming, and some of our colleagues they have already left. Let's discuss about the uh, uh, NRI's national and regional initiatives. Uh, where we talk about national and regional issues of internet governance, uh, youth IGF as well. There are around 100 IGF around the world. More than 10 regional IGF are there. And it's our honor that uh, Mr. Marcus Kumer is also here. Uh, can I request uh, Mr. Marcus uh, to join the table? So, <clears throat> we'll, uh, we'll be talking about the issues of national and regional IGF and the sustainability of national and regional IGF and the future of global IGF itself. If we have a robust practice on national and regional level, then definitely uh, this is my assumption that it will contribute for the future of regional IGF, uh, sorry, global IGF. As we know that uh, this IGF was the one of output of uh, WSIS process in Tunis, and agenda number 72 established uh, annual global IGF. Uh, uh, Mr. Marcus Kumar is one of the uh, leading contributor uh, in this whole process. And if I quote him, uh, I read his one of uh, article in GIS report in 2017. He mentioned that he had mentioned that uh, Caribbean IGF was one of uh, early IGF who started uh, IG discussion in the regional level. Uh, so uh, uh, we'll talk from a different perspective. We have colleagues from uh, Caribbean IGF, Mr. Tracy, who uh, has been engaged uh, since very long. Uh, this IGF itself is his uh, consecutive 11th IGF, if I'm not wrong. So he has good experience from uh, uh, regional, national, and global IGF as well. So uh, <clears throat> we'll discuss uh, from uh, that regional perspective as well. We have uh, uh, Dzeri Milosevic. Uh, she is from private sector. She represents uh, Western Europe and others group. And she also belongs to uh, UK IGF. UK IGF is one of the uh, oldest uh, national IGF in Europe. And we have Amrita Choudhury. Amrita is uh, uh, from Nepal. 
sorry, from India. I'm from Nepal. I apologize. <laughs> Amrita is a very good friend of mine, so that's why I consider her as... Uh, anyway, sorry. Uh, she has been engaged in uh, various IG activities in India. She is one of very contributor to uh, Indian School on Internet Governance, and Indian in School on Internet Governance also has started uh, youth IGF in India. But so far, uh, India is yet to have its own national IGF. We'll talk from that perspective as well. And she is also an uh, active contributor for Asia Pacific Regional Internet Governance Forum, and she is also a member of, uh, uh, MSC member of Asia Pacific Regional Internet Governance Forum. Uh, we are missing Ali Almasel. Uh, Ali was uh, one of uh, contributing. Uh, actor of uh, Arab world, Arab IGF, but uh, because of his uh, flight today itself, this morning, uh, we are missing him, and definitely uh, we'll discuss uh, from that perspective as well. We have Tatiana Tropina from uh, Western European and others group. Uh, she uh, was uh, based in Berlin itself. Now, uh, recently she has moved to uh, Netherlands, and she has been uh, contributing on uh, Eurodig and uh, German IGF as well. She will be uh, uh, sharing her uh, perspective in the discussion. We have Asim Rai. Uh, he is elected mayor of one municipality in Nepal, and he is also very uh, active uh, in uh, developing some uh, ICT friendly uh, environment in his uh, municipality. He has uh, certain commitment for his uh, own uh, uh, people, and he is uh, contributing at uh, Nepal IGF and SA Pacific Regional IGF as well. He will uh, share some of his uh, thought on this. And we have a very uh, important uh, stakeholder, youth IGF from Ghana. Miss Lily is here, and she will be sharing uh, Ghana Ghanaian. IGF, youth IGF uh, from African group. We have Yun Chang Choi uh, from uh, South Korean Internet Governance Forum. Uh, uh, I have not seen him, but uh, probably he'll join uh, very soon. We have Dustin Philip uh, from uh, US IGF. So we, we have very good representative uh, in the uh, uh, table. I'll not uh, consider this as traditional panel rather than participative uh, to the discussion. Uh, we have Mary Udumai uh, also uh, here, and uh, we'll discuss on the uh, uh, position of national and regional IGFs and the uh, contribution that can uh, make in global IGF, future of global IGF. Uh, I'll uh, start with Tracy, as uh, Caribbean IGF is one of very a old IGF uh, at uh, regional and uh, local level. Even it was uh, uh, during the uh, wishes process, uh, it was uh, started uh, its uh, preparation. So, Tracy, can you uh, share some of uh, your, your experience of Caribbean IGF and uh, how it was possible at that time to start uh, regional, sub regional IGF? Thank you. Thank you, Babu, and thanks for inviting me. Um, so, I'm Tracy Hackshaw representing the Trinidad and Tobago Multi Stakeholder Advisory Group. Um, but we've been participating as a country within the Caribbean IGF for several years. Um, as you hinted there, the Caribbean IGF, as a matter of fact, is the first official internet governance forum that started in 2005. As a matter of fact, um, I was reading from my notes here, the with this process, which began in 2003, um, failed to come to consensus on a number of matters. So, in preparation for a second round in 2005, within the Caribbean, the governments of the region um, asked a group called the Caribbean Telecommunications Union, who is a, a treaty-based body of the CARICOM group, which is in the Caribbean, to gather multi, several stakeholders, governments, academia, civil society, etc., to prepare for Tunis 2005. 
And in doing that, they held the first IGF in September 5th and 6th, 2005, in Georgetown, Guyana, um, with support from the CARICOM Secretariat and the United Nations Development Program. Uh, in that meeting, we had 42 participants from 30 organizations, um, Caribbean governments. Um, we had ICT policy professionals, ISPs, regulators, telecom service providers, consumer groups, legal practitioners, and NGOs. There were nine countries represented, um, Anguilla, Aruba, Barbados, Grenada, Guyana, Jamaica, St. Kitts, Nevis, St. Lucia, and Trinidad and Tobago. And the objectives of the, I, the first IGF were to apprise policymakers, industry regulators, practitioners, and other stakeholders of, of key issues relating to internet governance, which was new at the time, a new, relatively new topic, to agree on an appropriate range of focus, scope of works and resource priorities for the Caribbean stakeholders in the areas of internet governance, to commence identification and formulation of Caribbean positions on relevant internet governance issues as might be deemed appropriate for pursuing at the regional international levels, and importantly, to develop expertise in internet governance in the region in order to uh, ensure efficient and effective local administration and influence international internet governance developments and activities to take due account of regional interests. The uh, key principles that guided the first meeting, adoption of a regionally coordinated approach to internet governance issues, promotion of universal access, um, discussing soft touch regulatory approaches and a pro-competitive regulatory framework, um, equal access, non-discrimination, parity, unbundling, etc. Respect for the needs and rights of all stakeholders and protection of cultural diversity. And there's a, quite a lot more that we could go into here. So from 2005, there's been a Caribbean IGF every year. Um, so we're gonna be, exp I guess, I think it's 15th, but this was the 15th anniversary this year, held in Toronto, Tobago, and there'll be a, another one in 2020. Um, one of the things that the Caribbean IGF has in fact done is eventually spawn national IGF. So Trinidad and Tobago was the first English-speaking Caribbean country to have one in 2017. And we've seen Barbados have one in 2018, St. Vincent and Grenadines also having one. And we believe um, others are about to join. And we also know that our colleagues in the French-speaking Caribbean, Haiti, have had an IGF for a few years. And I believe the Dominican Republic has also had an IGF, and we expect Belize and others to follow. So, Tracy, I have one, uh, mm -hmm. one uh, following question on this. Uh, uh, Caribbean Telecommunications Union was one of the uh, driving agency who contributed setting up uh, Caribbean IGF. In, in international level, uh, International Telecommunication Union and, and uh, the intergovernance model are uh, totally different. How, uh, how relation uh, you, meant, you have been maintaining with uh, this. I mean, uh, uh, in ITU, there are lots of discussion that uh, internet governance should be under the ITU process and this, but uh, later on, stakeholder uh, came with the conclusion that uh, uh, internet governance model should be a multi-stakeholder model. So uh, still, uh, there are similar kind of relationship or it, it has grown up uh, differently? So as I uh, indicated first, the, the governments of the region um, had catalyzed the process in 2005. So there was a government-centric um, drive to have the 2005 Tunis Agenda meeting uh, prepared for. However, there was a mandate from 2003 um, with process into the Caribbean to have a multi-stakeholder approach. So while the governments did catalyze it through the CTU, since 2005 and going forward, the CTU, although a government-driven agency, has always um, sought to, to um, foster a multi-stakeholder approach to the Caribbean IGF. So there's never been a, um, a view that the governments hold the, the, you know, the seat in the IGF. As a matter of fact, um, the way the Caribbean IGF works, it, 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 because of the Caribbean, it's many islands scattered across 
water, they, we do electronic collaboration, electronic um, preparation for the meeting, and it goes out to a series of stakeholders throughout the region. Um, the CTU provides pretty much a secretariat role, as opposed to any dominant or guiding role. And um, I don't believe that there's any, I mean, I'm, with, I'm not sticking my head out and say that um, there's any direct relationship between the CTU and the ITU in this regard. But the CTU definitely in the Caribbean plays the role of facilitating a multi-stakeholder approach. Thank you, thank you, Tracy. Uh, I'd like to uh, request uh, Mr. Mark Skumer uh, 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 to talk about, uh, you are already uh, early contributor on IGF process and uh, you have uh, lots of experience on this. Uh, did, uh, 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 we thought about national and regional IGF during uh, setting up uh, global IGF process Yes, I don't really know where to start, but I mean, it's, the, it, it is one of the big success stories of the IGF, that the model of the IGF to have a bottom-up, multi-stakeholder policy discussion on internet governance issues, uh, that this has spread to over, I think, 120 countries in all regions. It is in many ways, a paradigm shift for many countries where governments used to be the only decision makers. And this is a totally different model of participatory democracy, where governments actually talk to other stakeholders to learn from them, to take into account their concerns, also their advice. It's a recognition, and that was the big breakthrough in WISIS that government said, yes, we do need the other stakeholders. The technology is important and the technology is new and we are not the experts as governments. We need to listen what the technologists say. We need to listen what the business says. And we also need to listen what civil society has to say. They may have concerns and they are advocates for human rights, for privacy. The technologists can say what works and what doesn't work. Sometimes governments say, well, can we not just do this? And then technology says, sorry, the technology doesn't allow to do that. I remember Wicked in, in 2012 in uh, uh, <coughs> Dubai, some government said, I want to know the traffic that goes through my country, which is a legitimate concern. Governments usually want to know what happens in their country. But then we had to tell them the internet is not built that way. We don't actually know where the traffic goes. It's a, it's a different technology. It's not like the telephone that goes from end to end. It's a distributed technology. And when you send off an email, it may go this way or it may go that way. It may go through your country, but it may not. But there's no way of establishing exactly what happens. So that is an important discussion to have. Governments need to be aware what can be done and what cannot be done. But then also the business is here to tell what is economically viable. Yes, it would be nice to have this or have that, but how does it work? Uh, but of course, governments are an important actor in this uh, arena. And also civil society it's, can also sometimes say what is maybe technically feasible is not desirable. Uh, face recognition is one of these issues. I think there's a big debate now in France. France wants to roll out a face recognition program, but there are huge concerns there about protection of privacy. So to cut the long story short, uh, there is a real need for having this multi-stakeholder discussion and the session we had yesterday actually was very interesting also and there was a, an example from Kenya where that the non-governmental stakeholders managed to influence a policy making process where parliamentarians listened to them and stopped from passing a law that really shows the impact you can have at the national level there much of internet governance happens at the national level and let me conclude what i like to say good internet governance begins at home 
The global discussions are important, but at the national level, they can make a real difference. And no government uh, is free from making mistakes. I mean, I'm also a member of the uh, Switzerland ISOC chapter, and we collected sign signatures in Switzerland. We have a system of direct democracy where you can vote. Parliament had passed a law about online gambling that foreign uh, casinos would not be allowed to make business in Switzerland. And the reason was very simple, it was a protectionist move, and then Parliament passed a law to block them. And we said, that doesn't work, and that's a misguided uh, move, but we lost the battle, and the vote was, yes, we now have internet blocking for foreign casinos in Switzerland. That is essentially was a coalition of people who are paid by the Swiss casinos. They give a lot of money to uh, charities, to sports associations, and they all said, no, we want that money, and so they were in favor of blocking foreign competitors, which is not what we would have advised the government or the parliamentarians to do. And there were enough people who were against it to collect a signature, but in the vote, in the end, we lost. And that just to show uh, it can happen to, in any country that something happens that is against the inter interests of the internet users, and that's why it is important to have this dialogue. And uh, let me conclude by congratulating all of you for your efforts at the national and regional level. It's thank, important. Thank you, Marcus. <coughs> now, I'll, I'll come to uh, uh, Europe. Uh, this is a uh, part of uh, UK IGF as well. Uh, so, uh, UK IGF is one of uh, old IGF in, in Europe. How you think about uh, uh, its uh, growth? and its uh, impact uh, in the uh, policy making or the uh, achieving objective of internet governance set out uh, in the uh, international to national uh, setup. Uh, thank you, yes, i first say a few words since you asked me from um, wearing my European hat uh, in addition to participating as a member of a steering committee in the UK IGF. Um, I also visit quite a lot of um, and attend the Eurodig and Southeastern Europe uh, dialogue on internet governance and many national ones like in Slovenia, Bosnia and so on. So. Um, it must be said that all of them are organized in a different manner, all of the 114 NRIs uh, that we have, including youth IGFs and regional, and, um, and they obviously must have a different impact in each of their region, uh, respectively. Uh, the growth is something that I've uh, personally witnessed, um, seeing IGF, uh, uh, CDIG inspiring some of them to pop up national IGFs in, in, in the Balkan states, especially in, in Macedonia. But um, in the UK, we had a consistent um, and stable IGF in terms of one sponsor um, that is a nominate. And although uh, it is good to have that stability of having one sponsor, on the other hand, there's also a challenge and a risk uh, if that uh, sponsor uh, one day disappears. So there is a, a need to diversify. And then how do you ensure that you get um, different sponsors? You need to make uh, more uh, relevant uh, discussions uh, for the uh, different stakeholders to participate. Um, I think we have all witnessed that in different IGFs, um, there is a lot, there's a usually a push from one stakeholder uh, to make things happen, but they are all inclusive. And the impact is exactly that, that Marco spoke to. It's this uh, inclusiveness that brings all stakeholders together and it's still organized in a bottom up um, uh, manner to allow these discussions uh, to take place. Uh, but they really need to be relevant uh, to the community, they need to be timely. Um, so, um, for example, um, 
the last uh, UK nominate IGF took, um, sorry, the UK IGF uh, uh, took place on November, 24th of November, and we have um, a wonderful report that we shared and some key messages that are being brought to the main IGF. And uh, most of the participants, uh, the discussions were very UK orientated and based on uh, what's going on in the UK in the digital policy realm. We discussed also the changes in the global um, internet architecture. So um, for people that do not have an opportunity to follow the uh, main and global IGF, um, it's, a, it's a good environment to um, familiarize the, um, uh, the community in the UK about the global happenings. So it w works both ways. So I would say there is um, really an impact takes place in these discussions, especially if the audience uh, um, take participation. Uh, you've seen this new uh, application called Slido that um, Eurodig and UK IGF and uh, CDIG and many other IGFs I, I go to uh, use in order to get a quick feedback from the audience. I think it's been growing very popular and, and it has different kind of... Um, um, uh, some people like it, some people <laughs> don't. Um, but the key thing is to get to the point to uh, develop discussion. It's not just to have panels, it's not just to have speakers, it's not to have one main, main stakeholder and one main sponsor behind it, but to diversify and to get to that point that um, we um, have a discussion that is relevant, that brings in sustainability and that people look forward to the next IGF where they can bring their um, issues and to have open calls uh, for workshops. Yeah, thank you, DJ. Uh, uh, now uh, I'll go to uh, Africa. Lily, a young uh, participant, young youth IGF representative is here. Uh, uh, Lily, how is your experience with this global IGF and how is your experience with your uh, national and regional IGF in Africa? Africa was one of late uh, entrant in the uh, IGF setup at, at African level, though there were some sub-regional IGFs were there. Can you uh, share some of your experience? How, what were the challenges that uh, you had in, in your national uh, IGF in Ghana uh, uh, briefly uh, and, and as a youth uh, IGF representative? Can you share uh, some of lights on this process? Good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you for the opportunity. So my name is Lily Edina Mboche from Ghana, and I currently coordinate the Ghana Youth IGF. I was um, privileged to have worked with other young people from around Africa to organize the West African Youth IGF and the African Youth IGF. And the, the IGF space in Africa is not so different from the one we see on the global stage. I'm going to speak from a youth perspective, especially um, regarding the offspring of uh, IGF initiatives in the region and more. So um, the Ghana Youth IGF had a maiden edition of the IGF this year. And we tried mimicking what happens in the global one, being open, um, using a multi-stakeholder approach. But one thing I realized was that um, there was an issue of personas and pathways. That is to say, how do people get involved? Where do they start from? How do they identify their stakeholder groups? We can identify because, well, we had uh, some background in uh, taking models in IGF and trying to understand how the whole structure is. And so that was an issue particularly for those who were trying to get in terms of what we're trying to organize and the, and the idea we're trying to drive home, especially because they, 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 they want to know how to play in and want to contribute to shaping the internet, but where exactly do they start? And how can they get involved? So that is a clear pathway I'm talking about. And another issue we're getting actually uh, from the Ghana Youth IGF was that beyond the event, beyond the sitting, how do we get what the youth have agreed on or the perspective or the addition youth bring to the table? How do we get that actually um, implemented or as part of the whole, um, the whole discussion of IGF in Ghana 
to probably lead to um, some policy reformation or something of the sort. Um, thankfully, this year, we had um, a communique issued at the end of our Ghana Youth IGF, which was also added to the main IGF of the country, and it's going to be presented to the Ministry of Communication, especially regarding affordability uh, of internet in Ghana and more. Now, um, regarding the West African Youth IGF and the African Youth IGF, what we see is that because there's, there's openness and there's, a, and there's structures to follow in creating one, and everybody actually has a fair play or a fair, a fair, a fair way to start an IGF, the, there was an issue of um, multiple IGFs, some, um, some from different... Uh, one, somebody has started an IGF, a youth initiative. Another one is starting the very same one. And so now we are reaching consensus and trying to see which way exactly to um, have a unified front. Someone said that we don't have many, the, the spring of many, many youth IGFs. There can be other initiatives that support, but we don't want the, the issue of the conflict and all. So what is happening is we get, uh, we, we, we have people especially for we who organize the West African IGF, we have countries reaching out and saying, how do we start one? So the issue of actually getting to know where to start still remains uh, a problem. So we share with them the NRI toolkit. It's, it explains a lot. And this is something anybody can start, um, provided you have representation from all the multi-stakeholder groups. But beyond that, what is the check? to ensure that there's impact at the end of the event and programs and what is, what is it, what it is we say we are discussing and trying to do. And um, if there are any KPIs you can run by and measurable impacts at the end of the discussion. The, um, the, the, the spear is really booming, uh, it's getting the youth attention, especially because young people are the very first generation of African, um, the very first generation of users of the internet who will not grow up just using it but building is very core. And so we are, we are taking um, some, some time to actually contribute to make sure that our voices are heard and we can contribute to what we envision the future of the internet to be. So sustainability-wise, is beyond the event and the, beyond the discussions we have, how to actually have what we discuss um, see um, the light of day and come into fruition. So that's what is happening from where I come from. Thank you. Uh, thank, uh, thank you, Lady. It's, it's uh, uh, very important that uh, we should have uh, youth representative in the whole process and we have been uh, engaged in, in this process and, and I really appreciate your uh, engagement. And Now, uh, I'll come to uh, Asia Pacific region and in Asia Pacific region, it's very vast region. We have around uh, 45 to 50 economies and there are uh, various uh, uh, time differences as well. So uh, uh, I'll come to Wakas uh, from Pakistan. And uh, uh, Wakas, uh, you are part of APRIGF. We have been engaged in APRIGF. Uh, but uh, so far, my knowledge uh, in Pakistan, uh, we're still uh, waiting for national IGF. C can you say some of uh, issues uh, uh, not having uh, national IGF so far, and what are the challenges that we have been uh, facing? Uh, can you share uh, some on uh, this? Um, so, thank you, Babu. Uh, for those who do not know, my name is Vakas. Um, I work for the telecom regulator of Pakistan called uh, Pakistan Telecommunication Authority, but I also volunteer for Internet Society. Um, yes, it's a, it's a bit of a misfortune that we didn't have a national IGF so far. Uh, and since you asked about the challenges, I think the beauty of internet governance itself is the multi-stakeholder process, but at the same time, it is also its biggest challenge. How to get everybody on board, um, how to have every stakeholder representation while, you're, uh, while you have discussions on internet um, is a big challenge. So far, we have been trying to get uh, this done. Um, to have all the stakeholders available for to organize this IGF, but somehow for some for some reasons we have not been able to do that so far. But uh, I bring good news uh, because we have now um, prepared a proposal and we are probably going to have an IGF in the first quarter of next year. The venue and other things have been finalized. We are working on the program right now. Um, one of the big paradigm shifts in which we 
because of which we have been able to do this now is the fact that uh, the government is very much on board with us um, and the other stakeholders as well. So um, unless you have all the stakeholders, there is no point in having a discussion on internet issues. This is the core belief that we have been working on so far. Um, and uh, we're very, very near to achieving that objective now. Um, so I think this is one of the updates that I have. Any other specific question, I'd be happy to answer. And thank you, Vakas. Uh, thank you very much uh, and congratulations for uh, setting up uh, uh, Pakistan IGF uh, in very near future. So uh, I'll come to Dustin, uh, who is uh, uh, engaged in, uh, who has been engaged in US IGF. Uh, uh, Dustin, can you share uh, your experience? Uh, uh, USA is uh, home of internet in some way. Uh, it, it was invented in, in USA and expanded from there. And uh, other countries uh, are having different uh, uh, issues like access and other uh, rights perspective as well. So uh, what type of uh, uh, discourse you'll, you have in US uh, IGF and uh, what kind of uh, uh, message uh, US IGF can give to other IGF if you have any specific and, and unique uh, experience? Thank you. Dustin? Sure. Thank. <clears throat> Thanks. Uh, my name is Dustin Loop, and I am uh, co-chair of the IGF USA. Um, and uh, you know, we cover a lot. I think a lot of the same issues that the other IGFs are covering. Um, I think one misconception is that access is not an issue in the U.S. It is very much an issue in the U.S. Both in the urban and rural context, um, and so we cover that almost on an annual basis. Um, and in, in, our, in identifying which topics we talk about over the past few years, we've been uh, working really hard to get more contributions, not just from the, the same, same voices and same contributors, but more people around the U.S. One, one um, challenge that we face is the size of the U.S. and uh, the different cultures uh, on the different coasts and different regions and, and in the center of the country, in the south and the Midwest. Um, and so what we've done to try to get more of a regionally diverse contribution is an IGF USA on the road initiative where um, we go visit different places around the US and usually we'll have a, we'll find an event that's already happening and tack on a, a side event that allows us to raise awareness for the IGF USA and just internet governance in general, because there are a lot of people talking about the issues that we care about, but not realizing that there's a direct kind of way for them to contribute to these discussions. Uh, Dustin, a uh, 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 follow-up question on uh, US IGF. How uh, national is this? I mean, uh, US is a very big country and having very big population, and, and, and you have a very uh, uh, different uh, state they have their dis different uh, laws at local level and how uh, it is uh, uh, collectively representing as US IGF and uh, what what character uh, you are making uh, uh, bound in that do you have any uh, subnational uh, IGF practice or something like that no, so the closest thing that we have to a subnational would be this this IGF USA on the road series, um, but that's trying to get more events happening throughout the year, so it's not just a single IGF, um, and you know there's discussions happening throughout the year in different places. Um, but the main one is always held in Washington, D.C., or at least it always has been up until now. Um, and I think that's because we've developed a center of gravity there where it, it makes sense to host it there. We have uh, sponsors that want to see it there. Um, we have a, a kind of core organizing group that's there, but we're really working to expand the, the 
core group of organizers, and uh, we hope to see more, we don't want to call them subnational because we don't think it should be a hierarchical thing, um, but we are looking to get, get events happening in different areas of the US. Thank you, Dustin. Now, uh, I'll come to uh, Tatiana. Uh, in Europe, there are uh, sub-regional uh, IGF as well. So, uh, what is the importance of having sub-regional IGFs and uh, relation with the regional IGF, sub-regional IGF, and national IGF? You have been also contributing uh, since long in uh, German IGF as well. So, uh, how we can build harmony or how we can make that relation uh, good uh, and contribute to uh, the uh, road to the global IGF? Uh, thank you very much. So, <clears throat> uh, Tatiana Tropina. Uh, so just for the record, I wasn't the one who was there at Eurodig, which stands for European Dialogue on the Internet Governance from the beginning. Uh, the Eurodig was established in 2008, and I joined in 2011. And I'm currently what we call subject matter expert on cybersecurity issues. Why Eurodig? Well, first of all, if we think about Europe, we think a lot about European Union. Uh, there are policies harmonized, the governance processes harmonized, but Europe is much broader than European Union. When you think about Eurodig and its reach and outreach, there would be Georgia, there would be Serbia, there would be other countries, which geographically Europe, but politically not European Union. And it is very important to get those countries included as well. Um, why haven't you redig? Well, there are lots of national and regional IGFs that exist themselves, but they are also sometimes inspired by Eurodig. Um, their dialogue is shaped by Eurodig as well. Eurodig does promote engagement in this multi-stakeholder manner. Uh, it promotes sharing expertise. It promotes bringing uh, stakeholders at the same table. In a way, I do believe that Eurodig shapes European values on the internet governance. IGF shapes them as well, but it is so important to bring stakeholders together regionally. I do think that Eurodig in a way inspired CDIG, although CDIG for me was very, very much bottom-up initiative in Eastern Europe, but still the first CDIG um, got, um, took place in Sofia together with Eurodig and they still uh, issue and joint call for issues, although CDIG exists very much independently from Eurodig. Um, and it's also called dialogue, right? Dialogue and internet governance. I do believe that with years, Eurodig developed a lot. So, for example, at the beginning, it was more or less like IGF model. People submitted proposals for the workshops and then they were selected. Now, we just ask at Eurodig for the calls for, um, we issue the call for issues, and stakeholders and individuals and organizations are submitting just one or two lines. What is important for Europe? What do you think is important to be discussed this year? And then we have subject matter experts few of us on various topics, access and literacy, uh, cyber security, human rights, and we identify which issues can be merged together. And then we uh, call for focal points who would um, organize people who submitted the issues in organizing team. It is very much bottom-up approach. Yes, sometimes it has its drawbacks and short shortcomings because it is very much based on voluntary work and time that people are ready to invest. But it also leads to discussing very controversial and very current issues. Like, for example, in, in my field, I can speak for myself, there was this proposal on the um, EU Directive on Electronic Evidence, which, um, which um, would bring a lot of controversy into digital investigations and human rights and safeguards, both for industry and internet users. Of course, we discuss such issues like over the years like GDPR, like network neutrality, but it also very much depends on which country we go. Because, for example, in Georgia, the issues for this country would be different than, let's say, for the Netherlands like access and literacy, like how to get stakeholders involved. 
So yes, I do believe that Eurodig is very much needed because we are shaping in many ways the European agenda on the internet governance which then goes down like structurally to the national IGFs but also up to the global IGF. And we are contributing to bringing together and shaping European values and then channeling them to the global IGF. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tatiana. Uh, it's always very important to having uh, own IGF and own discussion. That's very important. And uh, talking about own uh, IGF, own discussion, uh, how inclusiveness is important. Uh, I'll come to my home uh, country, my colleague uh, here, uh, Mr. Asim Rai is mayor of uh, one of uh, municipal municipality in Nepal. Uh, his municipality is based of uh, Mount Everest, which is very remote from the center and uh, access, not only access, there are lots of issues uh, of uh, uh, internet uh, in his own, uh, municipality. Uh, As uh, Asim, how you think that this kind of uh, discussion can contribute uh, uh, to uh, your uh, municipality level and how you think that uh, inclusion uh, could be maintained uh, from these kind of uh, discussions, uh, uh, Asim? Uh, thank you, Babu, sir, and good morning to you all. Basically, my name is Asim Rai. I'm from the, the land of Mount Everest. By the way, I'm the youngest mayor in Nepal. Uh, we're talking, talking about here how to govern the internet, how to make them secure, and et cetera. But in our area, Basically, in rural uh, places, there is a ma major problem is the connectivity of internet itself. There is no access of internet. So, my request is this uh, platform is that to contribute the internet connectivity also over there around the world, where is the where is not easy uh, to access the internet. Basically, digital inclusion is the main theme of the time. Unless and until we make inclusive internet, we cannot grow together. The workshop is to enhance local, make inclusive internet. Enhanced to design, development, and the execution of the local IGF. It is obvious that when a policy and technology both developed through inclu inclusive and multi-stakeholders approach, the outcome will be inclusive and will be for all. There is growing concern of the maintaining the multi-stakeholders model of the internet go governance. It is further important that the national and regional IGF should grow further and strengthen. We need to enhance the regional and local IGF and the session was also dedicated to the sustainability for the NRI, national and regional IGF. Thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, Asim. It's very important to have uh, before discussing about internet governance, we should have internet at least. So uh, it's very important to uh, have uh, internet. Now uh, uh, I'll come to uh, the floor. Uh, any uh, any voice? Uh, then I'll come. Then I'll, I'll come to uh, more uh, 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 friends. First, I'll open the floor, and then I'll come back uh, to uh, specific. Uh, uh, speakers. Anu, Anu from Bangladesh, uh, would you like to share your experience? What are the challenges, especially uh, for 
uh, a country like Bangladesh uh, to have national IGF and contribute from national IGF to regional and, and global IGF. Though we don't have hierarchy on the uh, IGF, national, regional, and global, but uh, contributing at different level is uh, uh, important part. Anu, follow for you. Thank you, Baburam. Uh, good morning. This is Mohammad Abdullah Konu, Secretary General of Bangladesh Internet Governance Forum. I would uh, share with my uh, with our country IGF. We are uh, this year, 16 November. We are organizing the Bangladesh IGF. First session, we are, we are organizing Bangladesh Youth IGF. Opening session, Internet Governance, perspective on current status and future, achieving the SDGs in the digital age. Keynote paper presented by Paul Winson, Director General, APNIC. And Chief Guest, His Excellency Mostafa Jabbar, Ministry, Minister of Post and Telecommunication Division. Second session, we are organizing emerging Anu, technology. Uh, uh, can you uh, share your experience rather than the event that you had, uh, your perspective on the uh, process from national uh, to global and your limitations, your challenges from that perspective? Uh, this is uh, our challenges is uh, one challenge is we are organizing the fund uh, fundraising is very much challenges uh, and another challenge is we are finishing the our uh, uh, consultation uh, our policy makers saying we need cross border e-commerce policy we need e-commerce act we need broadcast law uh, data security act national P plan for internet of things national plan for artificial intelligence national plan for 5G, uh, and also digital Bangla content bank. This is our local, con uh, uh, local language. Uh, this is our challenging issue uh, is upcoming. Uh, and impact of our uh, uh, Bangladesh IGF uh, policy advocacy with ICANN for top level domain in Bangla for fourth uh, UN uh, IGF Sharmal Sheikh Egypt 2009, we are starting and we are completing and achieving the uh, top level uh, Bangla uh, 2016. And we are organizing the uh, School of Internet Governance. Uh, here is another challenge, uh, is the fundraising is very big issue. Uh, here that uh, we are already three years, uh, we are starting 2017 is the first School of Internet Governance. Uh, Second School of Internet Governance we are organizing 2018, and this year also be uh, organizing a, a School of Internet Governance. Is this School of Internet Governance is significant to having national IGF discourse? No, this is uh, organized the Bangladesh Internet Governance Forum, uh, and uh, also we are supporting this school there. Okay. Uh, okay. Here is the result of 115 stakeholder participate in three batches. Approximately 50 policy expert, resource person, policy maker attended and shared the knowledge. Thank you, Nana. Thank you very much. Thank you, Anu. <clears throat> now, I'd like to uh, 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 give uh, the floor for Mary Udumba. Mary is very uh, experienced uh, uh, campaigner of NRI's. Uh, so far, I know uh, she has been contributing in uh, this process. Uh, in uh, Africa, there are some more regional uh, initiatives, and uh, if I'm not wrong, some of uh, sub-regional uh, uh, initiatives are abandoned, I mean, uh, not continued uh, uh, when they started. If I'm not wrong, you can correct me on that. How important is the discourse of internet governance in Africa, in particular having uh, grassroots level IG discourse? Uh, uh, Mary, proof for you. Thank you very much. My name is Mary Uduma. I'm from Nigeria. Uh, the good thing is that I am also the MAG chair of uh, the Continental uh, IGF, which is the African IGF. So in Africa, we have five regions. We have the East, West, North, uh, South, and Central um, regions. And uh, some of, uh, of our region has started their IGF. Like West Africa, we have been consistent. In South Africa, it's not just been uh, that regional IGF. 
not been steady. In the north, um, I think they are regrouping now and the north will hold their own. In the, in the Central Africa, the same thing we've been having. In the East Africa, if East Africa has started again. But one good thing is this, that in Africa, we, we ask uh, the regional blocks, economic blocks, to support the IGFs. So at least to have sustainability, to have the buy-in of the, of the regional uh, bodies in the uh, ICT uh, directors there or uh, ministers. Okay, and so that has helped us to maintain the, the regional IGF. And when we do the, the discussions that are held at the regional level will be brought up and linked to the, the continental IGF that happens one, once a, a, uh, every year. So, and as we speak, the African Union has taken it upon itself to, 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 to strengthen the IGFs in Africa be it regional, even national. So as at now, the School of Internet Governance is being strengthened, and there's, there's a, a project that the African Union do support the, 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 the school, school of Internet Governance. And we believe that when we have strong School of Internet Governance, we develop the next generation that will continue the sustainability of Internet Governance in Africa. Second thing is that um, African Union Africa, African Union also has launched its own uh, youth IGF. And that youth IGF is a very strong one, and uh, we believe that as the youth IGF becomes stronger, just like our lady from uh, Ghana has said, so we, we, are, we are seeing a lot of cohesion, a lot of uh, bringing issues that would be of benefit to the locals. Now, let me talk a little bit about our national IGF, Nigeria. We, we, Nigeria, like U.S., is a very large country. So what we had, the strategy we have taken is that we have subnational IGFs that they, 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 they hold their own IGF and then at the national level will come together as the national level to, to hold one, once a year the national IGF. And we also have the youth IGF, which does its own youth program with support and then they bring in their their, their communicate and their report to be part of the national IGF. I don't know whether I've answered your question and uh, if that uh, makes Mary, a uh, 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 small uh, follow-up question. As uh, African IGF, uh, uh, African Union hosts the secretariat and uh, supports, uh, do they uh, support from financially uh, to host African IGF as well? Um, African Union is the, is the secretariat of Africa IGF and is in their budget. They put budget line for IGF for the, the continental IGF. Okay. But there's a special project that they are doing now that supports the regional IGFs in terms of School of Internal Governance. And that's what they have been doing, building capacity to make sure that Africans are more effective, are participating more effectively. You can see the number of Africans that are here is because of what, has, what is taking place in the African Union. That's interesting. But uh, do you think that uh, African Union is uh, intergovernmental uh, agency and in, uh, IGF uh, in uh, global and uh, other IGF, uh, the practice is rather than multi-stakeholder than intergovernmental. Do you think that there is any, uh, uh, um, how is the harmony between uh, this? Okay, we don't have any conflict. Is the secretariat. But we have Africa, uh, Africa IGF MAG, which I chair, so is a multi-stakeholder MAG. So we advise, we shape the program, but when it comes to fundraising, when it comes to support, when it comes to um, presenting our outcomes to the, uh, to the heads of state, is African Union that will present to, and they will present to the head of states. So there's no conflict. That's good, thank you, Mary. Uh, now uh, I'll come to uh, uh, Japan. Uh, our colleague, Kesuki Kamimura, uh, he, he represents Japan. Can you share uh, Japanese experience having Japanese IGF? Okay, thank you. My name is Keisuke Kamimura, uh, speaking on behalf of Japan IGF. Um, well, actually, the idea of uh, the IGF is not necessarily well received in Japan. Um, we had the first national IGF 
meeting in 2010, where we also invited Mr. Marcus Kuma. Uh, so we have a bit, little bit of history of having the IGF uh, now. Uh, but uh, we used to have uh, two streams of meetings annually. Uh, we used to host a national IGF meeting, annual national annual national IGF meeting, as well as uh, a series of smaller uh, IGF-related meetings on specific policy issues. But uh, for the last few years, we are trying to define ourselves as a national uh, sort of IGF, in a way. And as a result, we only have uh, smaller meetings in 2018 and 2019. So, um, this is this may or may not be a sustainable sustainable issue of uh, Japan IGF. Uh, the problem uh, with the, with Japan IGF is is like this: um, internet policy issues are ten, internet policy issues issues tend to be discussed in uh, various specific. Uh, forum, fora, or policy panels that may or may not be convened by uh, the government. Uh, many of them are also uh, initiated by industry or the civil society. So lots of discussion is going on elsewhere uh, other than the Japan IGF uh, framework. So. Um, what we are trying to do is not to host the nationwide dialogue on internet governance related issues as Japan IGF, uh, but to uh, try to bring in what have already been discussed uh, elsewhere to the Japan IGF arena. So um, we do have bottom up uh, dialogue and discussion on policy issues, but that, that does not necessarily take place in uh, Japan IGF uh, conferences. Um, we, we don't see uh, this is a fault or failure of the Japan IGF, but we rather see uh, Japan IGF as a thin model of running the local initiative. So. Um, but um, how uh, it is uh, an issue, it is a current issue of us that how we can run the Japan IGF as a under the thin model. So that's uh, where we are now. Thank you, Kes uh, Thank you, Kesuke. Uh, now uh, I'll come to. Next to uh, uh, my Amrita, uh, Amrita is from India, and India uh, government of India uh, started. Uh, th there was uh, one discussion on Indian IGF. There was uh, one ma uh, MSG list given by government, but that did not happen. Uh, but uh, you have been uh, engaged in. Uh, uh, school on Indian Governance, and you have also uh, started uh, Youth IGF uh, in, in India. So uh, how important is the National IGF, though uh, you are not having so far, I hope uh, you'll have in future. What is the importance of uh, this you are uh, thinking, and what are the limitations that you are not having IGF? And how you think that you, the IG discourse can contribute to the regional and global level? Right. Um, thank you, Babu. Um, in 2008, we had um, a kind of multi-stakeholder group which came together, and we had a conference. We called it the India Internet Conference, which was in lines with the IGF. Unfortunately, after that, we didn't have any such discussions. We did, after that, have the government constitute a MAG. It was not so transparent as the process should be. And ultimately, nothing much happened there. But if we look at the internet governance discourse in India, it's pretty wide. People do participate. I'm not saying 
a lot more a lot more people can participate but the participation is limited however there are discussions but um, when we look at india we are having these discussions in pockets uh, it might be specific telecom discussions or internet governance discussions or it might be um, you know, tech health, tech agriculture. So it's not in under one roof. Um, from the Internet Society, that's another hat which I wear uh, from. I had the Delhi chapter. So four of the uh, chapters in India of Internet Society, we came together and we formed the India School of Internet Governance. One of the objectives, apart from building capacity amongst people, was to um, you know, try to in start the discussion of why not have an India um, IGF. Um, so for that, um, two years back, we supported certain youth who were also our alumni to start the Youth India IGF initiative. So the second uh, edition of Youth India IGF, we had it very just two weeks earlier in a city called Calcutta. We had more than 100 pe young people participating and engaging in the discussions. I had one of the organizers in the room. Unfortunately, he had to leave for the youth IGF uh, meeting, else I would have asked him to share more um, on it. However, we are speaking to other stakeholders um, and trying to see if we can start some part of, you know, some form of the um, India IGF. Why it is necessary is to bring all kinds of discussions, um, since internet is all pervasive and it affects all our um, lives, uh, how can we bring all these discussions under one room so that we discuss on sustainability, we discuss on names and numbers and other, you know, even the rights, human rights, privacy, which is happening in silos into one room. So this is something which we are trying to do. Um, and also to get everyone into the same room is pretty difficult in a country like India where we have diverse interests, cultures, regional uh, aspects. Um, so that's something, but Babu here, I would like to add something on the Asia Pacific regional, in, you know, what I hear about African Union and from the APAC region and um, Eurodig, if you would just allow me two minutes. Sure. Um, so what we see is when we talk about since I'm also part of the Asia-Pacific Regional IGF, um, cert certain dis differences which we see with the others when you're talking about Eurodig or the, um, uh, you know, the African IGF is, um, one is we do not have a defined number of countries in APAC. Um, you know, different ISTAs have different um, countries who come under APAC. So that, again, brings an issue. And we have so diverse countries, uh, they might not be so culturally linked. So it is a very loose network which we have. We do work on it. For example, we had the last meeting in Vladivostok. Many of the Asians could not participate there. However, the advantage was that people from that part of Russia actually came to hear about what internet governance is. So that's the positive side, but we have the flip side too, that most Asians couldn't go. Um, the second part is the lack of government involvement, as in I'm not saying involvement, involvement, but their participation is required. APRIGF has a l quite a less of government participation, except the local host perhaps, and that's what we've been seeing for some time. Funding definitely is an issue because we have concerns of who's going to take the next um, APR IGF. Uh, Babu is having a lot of fun <laughs> issues raising funds currently because the next one is in Nepal. Um, what I like about African um, IGF is uh, the government is involved, but they are not involved directly, but they are supporting, and that support is necessary, especially in developing uh, emerging um, continents. And what I like of Euro uh, Dig is the kind of, um, uh, you know, it is looked at as a place which delivers a lot of um, thinking material, policy material, and the governments also look back to Eurodig for um, reference materials and others, which is a positive part. I don't think that happens with APRIGF. I think that is something which we need to work on. And perhaps for the sustainability of regional IGFs, that's my personal feeling, somehow if we can uh, show that there is a value for uh, governments, businesses, etc., as a discussion point where, you know, certain tangible discussions happen, not only just, you know, talking, sitting and talking, which is necessary. Um, perhaps they would see value in investing and also uh, referring to reference materials uh, generated there. Uh, uh, thank you, Amrita. Obviously, 
uh, API Rage of has certain challenge on fundraising as well as I, we are hosting in Nepal for 2020. Uh, uh, I'd like to, uh, uh, I'm, I'm trying to uh, uh, bring the voice from various in regional and national IGF uh, representative here uh, participating in this room. Uh, we have uh, uh, Leah from Bolivia. Uh, uh, I would like to request her to share some of uh, her experience or uh, challenges they are facing uh, in, in very briefly. Thank you. Uh, good morning. I'm going to speak uh, in Spanish, please. Uh, yo soy Lía Solís de Bolivia. Eh, pertenezco al capítulo Bolivia del Internet Society y somos eh, las, los que nos encargamos de la organización del IGF en, nuestra, en nuestro país. Eh, nosotros hemos tenido dos eh, IGFs. El, nuestra primera exper experiencia ha sido muy enriquecedora porque si bien el IGF eh, local no es vinculante, el resultado que nosotros hemos tenido con este IGF ha sido muy productivo entre varias cosas que se ha logrado al poder escuchar al gobierno y a las entidades privadas y a la sociedad civil, es que, por ejemplo, eh, la, eh, nosotros tenemos un punto de intercambio de tráfico que ha abierto sus puertas a generadores de contenido como ser la academia eh, y proveedores de, de Internet pequeños. En nuestro, en nuestro segundo IGF que hemos tenido, eh, hemos notado que eh, en algún momento en el IGF, en, 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 al encontrarse todos en un mismo sitio, existe algún tipo de, de la parte de gobierno que se siente con, como un poco confrontada por lo que es la sociedad civil y las empresas privadas. Entonces, hemos tratado y estamos en, en nuestro, entre nuestros retos, está de romper esas barreras de diálogo entre, entre, entre las partes interesadas y que uno no se sienta atacada por la otra. Entre los temas principales que nosotros tenemos a futuro está el de, eh, por ejemplo, dada la situación eh, actual por la que pasa, atraviesa Bolivia, uno de los temas principales que queremos tocar eh, es el, el poder eh, de, la, de las redes sociales o, por ejemplo, los fake news en el comportamiento de la sociedad. Eh, que, 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 como les decía, estamos atravesando por un, un, un proceso de cambio en nuestro, en nuestro país y hemos visto que esto ha tenido suficiente repercusión. Por otro lado, en nuestra corta experiencia en IGF, nosotros eh, hemos sido sede de un LAC IGF eh, que, que, eh, que según eh, las opiniones de otros países, ha tenido bastante éxito. Entonces, estamos arrancando con algo bastante sólido y fuerte gracias a las experiencias que comparten otros países. Thank you, dear. Gracias. I was expecting that uh, there is a translation, but uh, uh, I don't see a translation. Uh, we'll uh, check from the record and, and we'll try to uh, uh, incorporate your opinion uh, in the uh, final report of this workshop as well. Uh, now I can see Oksana, if I'm not wrong, she's from Ukraine and uh, she represents Central Asian sub-regional uh, uh, level. So Oksana, uh, can you say some of uh, your experience and your challenges and, and uniqueness briefly because we are also having just 11 minutes left uh, for this. Uh, I'm not uh, limiting you only, but uh, for uh, next round of uh, uh, comment, I'll uh, come to the panelist. Yeah, Oksana, uh, floor for you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I am Oksana Prihotka uh, from Ukraine. I am member of IGF UA steering committee and I am the uh, observer of US IGF UA. Uh, this year we had 10th edition of IGF UA and uh, second edition of US IGF UA. Um, Mm, two years ago, we decided to ban uh, USAGF UA and IGF UA uh, under the umbrella of Ukrainian Internet Days. And uh, this year, we had uh, even uh, Ukrainian Internet Week because of RIPE NCC Days, which were held also in Kiev uh, in September 2019. Uh, 
This year we have extremely uh, successful events. Uh, I'm talking about uh, inclusion of uh, global uh, agenda into our national IGF. We discussed the UN report on digital cooperation and we uh, provided our comments and messages to Eurodic yes. and uh, these messages were included in the Eurodic uh, contribution to uh, global uh, discussion. Um, besides, my, we also discussed uh, electron, European electronic communications code uh, implementation in Ukraine. And uh, I have to say that it was really multi-stakeholder uh, event uh, session because we had representatives of uh, Internet Association uh, who represents uh, point of view of uh, small ISPs. We had uh, Ukrainian parliamentarian who is working on uh, implementation of this legislation. We had uh, Roberto Gaetano from uh, Eurala, I can, uh, and uh, other experts uh, and uh, representatives of civil society. And uh, uh, we have uh, very practical results. We have working group at Ukrainian parliament. I am member of this working group on implementation of this legislation. And uh, um, at USA uh, IGF UA, we, um, not, not we, but USA uh, raised also extremely important issues, and uh, they were also included in, uh, in messages from uh, USA, uh, for example, regarding um, standards for websites for visually impaired. Uh, persons and uh, just now uh, representative uh, moderator of USAIGF UA Valeria Dubitskaya uh, put, in, uh, put in contact with uh, ISOC uh, special group for uh, disadvantaged people and with Google uh, to collaborate to such standards in Ukraine and maybe for thank, th thank you Oksana uh, is there any uh, question or comment uh, online? On, on, no? Is it a remote question we have? Or you? Do you have a question? I have a question. Yes. Sure. Thank you, Babram. Uh, uh, basically, session name is the strategy for future NRI. But uh, a discussion going on only experience, but we did not find we do not find out any future strategy. So in this regard, uh, my question is: What is IGF plus? Can we get something strategic uh, direction from the IGF plus? So this is my one question. Another two suggestion is: uh, I, I must congratulate you to organize the APR IGF in Nepal. It is very good for the Asia Pacific uh, region. I would appreciate if you involve, try to involve the government participation, only send to the invitation, then they may, may be join, of course, and as well as some member of the parliament involve the process. And last one is the try to involve the national level private sector associations, because they are the playing a very vital role. So uh, this is my question, because uh, from the morning to now, you ask a lot of questions to the uh, speakers. Now I am question to you. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you very much. As a host, uh, definitely uh, we'll try to uh, engage more uh, stakeholders. And uh, APRIGF uh, also has a practice of sending invitation to various stakeholders. Now I would like to, uh, uh, we have a very uh, short time. Uh, listening, uh, listening, uh, all those experience. What could be the uh, uh, suggestion for uh, future IGF? Uh, yeah, please. Sorry, I, I have a question. Um, thank you so much to the speakers for sharing your experiences. I'm Ellen Strickland uh, from Internet New Zealand, and we're involved with the New Zealand IGF. And one question I have, almost a raise of hands, is that um, we're the CCTLD, the Country Code Operator, and I'm aware that um, within CCNSO there's been a working group of internet governance set up and one of the things um, 
there is that they're quite aware that many CCOTLEs are involved in the national and uh, national initiatives as well as regional. And I just wondered of those who presented whether your uh, CCTLDs are involved as funders or um, many times you know they often have money, but also they're connected to the local internet community. So. Yeah, yeah, that's so my question. If I talk from the, though we don't have an IGF, but the CCTLD in India, dot in, has been involved in our initiative, even the youth initiative. Thank you. Uh, as we have just five minutes left uh, on schedule time, I would like to uh, uh, collect a few strategic uh, interventions from uh, our speakers. Uh, Desiree, uh, can you say uh, very quickly, uh, listening uh, with all this experience, uh, uh, any uh, recommendation for future strategy? Well, as I said in my opening, um, every uh, IGF is uh, different, uh, and therefore it seems they have different um, challenges and different needs. Uh, so I actually welcome that diversity in approaching of a problem. Um, one of the things that would make the process very stable, uh, maybe it takes about five years of, uh, of, of having an IGF until you can found an entity like it happened at the German um, National IGF has just uh, set up this year, a month ago, um, a non-for-profit entity that will be a steering committee and a program committee. So that's something, you know, to look forward to, um, to have a stable uh, entity that can accept um, uh, sponsorship and funding from different stakeholders, you know, something to aim for. It's not easy. And I really appreciate the comments from Bangladesh with a list of all the digital policy issues that the country itself has to deal with. And so they seem to have an action plan already. Um, so there is um, you know, no um, silver bullet for, for everything, but I think it's a nice uh, thing. Thank you, DJD. Uh, Tracy, very quick. Yes, two points I'd like to echo. Um, there's raised comments about the structures that need to be set up. And it's important that it's a multi-stakeholder structure, so not dominated by one entity over another. That's very important, and it needs to be legal. Another thing that needs to be looked at, I think, especially in a regional IGF scenario, is the, you know, this rotation amongst um, countries and territories and so on. One of the things that we found in the Caribbean is that when you go to another territory or country, while you go there and that territory or country has participation, the other countries are, find it difficult to get to. So there must be some way to have, in the regional environment, the ability to get the other countries who are not in that country to that part of the world. I think that's important. Thank you, Tracy. <clears throat> a very uh, quick response. Lily, uh, from your perspective, how uh, uh, we can uh, give some message for global IGF. Recommendations. Okay, so um, from my from the youth perspective, because we have uh, many young people willing to participate and willing to start initiatives, I think there should be a way to actually check who starts what, able to measure impact, and to avoid the issue of multiple initiatives being started for the very same reason, because those at the end will be redundant and not really yield what they're supposed to do. Also, there should be structures to check exactly how people enter the space, like how to get people to enter the space, making it clearer so people know this is where I play, this is the stakeholder group I, I, can, I, I can join, or this is where I identify as um, a member in the IG ecosystem, and together all of us can play well. Thank, to, thank uh, you, Lily. Uh, a very quick response from Tatiana. Um, I believe that uh, regional and national IGFs can fit the global IGF under this IGF plus model which, said, which was suggested in the uh, report on digital cooperation. And in this way, IGF would facilitate multi-stakeholder 
input into multilateral system of the United Nations. And I believe that this is the greatest strength on, of the national and regional initiatives, to be able to contribute in this dialogue and make multi-stakeholder processes complement in multilateral process. And just as a note, European dialogue on the internet governance did collect and summarize the the response to digital cooperation reports from European stakeholders, and it's available on the website. And basically, I'm just here channeling this general opinion that Th IGF Plus model and NRIs can facilitate the multi thank, thank you, Tatiana. We have just uh, 30 minutes left. Thank you very much, uh, all of you, for joining this uh, important meeting, important uh, discussion, rather. Uh, this is Baburam Ariel. I'm vice chair of uh, MSG of Asia Pacific Regional Internet Governance Forum, and we are hosting in Nepal uh, APRIG of 2020. I would like to request all of you, uh, if possible, you mark your calendar. It's May 26 uh, to 29 in Kathmandu. Uh, welcoming you all. Uh, I hope Marcus has a good. Uh, ex uh, listen, this uh, discussion has uh, given uh, significant uh, uh, inputs uh, for the uh, future of global IGF process. And uh, by this, uh, thanking all of you, I conclude this uh, uh, workshop. Thank you very much. I would like to request all of you to uh, assemble for uh, a final photograph. Thank you if it is okay with you. <laughs>